Hello and welcome to Video Revealed. I'm Colin Smith. Let's have a look at some Bollywood style effects. All right, so in typical Bollywood style, many of these are way over the top, but uh, I was actually impressed with, with one of these effects and I'll show you how I created them. So let's have a look at what I made first. Never go slow or hard like a rhino. rhino. Never go slow or hard like a rhino. All right, so let's go piece by piece through this and I'll, I'll show you what I did. Uh, first one, there's, this is just a regular shot, nothing there. Um, now these effects here, you can see that I actually have three different layers to create this effect. And the, the bottom layer is just the clip itself, so there's nothing happening there. The second layer is an adjustment layer and the top layer is a com is a graphic element, and that's this shape here. So the adjustment layer has a transform effect, and if I turn this transform on and off, you can see what happens. The transform has a scale value, and the scale only shows up where these lines are. If we go to the top, that's where these shapes are. So if I turn off V2, I created a bunch of shapes and you can see they're just a bunch of vector shapes and that's created with the graphics. So any kind of title shape uh, that you can draw is on the top layer and that tells the middle layer where the effect is. What is the effect? The effect is transform. So every place that there's, a, there's the shape, it enlarges in that shape. So if we turn that the middle layer on, you can see that's what's happening right there. The middle layer is an adjustment layer, as I mentioned, that has transform and it has track mat key. The track mat key is set to video three alpha. Alpha just means transparent. If we look again here, you can see when you have a graphic shape, whether it's a circle or a square or a, a type words, whatever is outside of the shape is transparent. That's the alpha. The track mat is a mask. Uh, it's an, um, um, an animated mask that's following whatever's animating in the layer above it. What's in the layer above it? A bunch of triangles that are that are starting small and getting large. It's it's not that complicated. So when you play this one back, that's what you get. And the next one is the same thing, but this adjustment layer has an invert effect on it. Invert is like opposite. It's the same thing in Photoshop. If you've ever inverted something, you can see it's the opposite. It's the negative value of that. And it simply just has an on and off mode. And these were effects that I, I completely copied from a Bollywood video that I watched. I, 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 they were using the same thing. Transform and enlarge, and maybe they didn't even use Premiere Pro, but they were using an application that allowed you to create a, a distortion effect or an, uh, an imaging effect like invert in an isolated area. What's the isolated area? A bunch of triangles jumping at the screen. It's not that complicated, really. If you put this these two layers together, it's going to look the same. Now, the next one here, this is the one that, that I had fun with. Okay, let me just turn the music off here because we don't need that. So look at what's happening. Let me just enlarge this and I'll step back and forth with my arrow. Can I do that? I can't. And what I found interesting about this effect 
is that the subject, and, and I've only ever seen this done with, with one individual performer, is that subject, the performer, they don't change. And what I'm doing is I'm just scaling this horizontally. And typically, if you do that, um, you, you'll, just, you'll distort the person too, and it, it just looks kind of cheesy. But actually, if you mask out the person in the middle, then you get that effect. Ooh. Ooh. And it happens so fast, you don't really see that the mask I'm cutting is not perfect. Um, it could be more perfect, but I'll break this down in a second. But that's the effect. Ooh. And I use this in several places. So what's going on here? Well, I've got a layer above. And I just created a very a loose mask. And you see that the only time the mask is not following him, you don't have to rotoscope him the whole way. I just drew a mask closely around that area just when he gets to, to that point. And if we just look at the bottom layer, the bottom layer just does that. And if you like that, then you're done. But I don't like how his body and head is distorted. And all that's happening here is I've, I've got a transform with uniform scale turned off. And I have three keyframes. The first one is 100%. The last one is 100%. And the middle one is 120%. So it just does that. And when you add the top track on top of that, it kind of keeps him. I mean, you see a little bit of repeating in here with the mask. And the reason that the you've got to be careful with that mask is if you cut it too close, you'll see him on the other side, right? There's the underneath one, and the underneath one is actually enlarged 120% horizontal. So I, I futzed around with this mask a little bit, cut it as close as I, I could. And what you're doing is you're preventing the expansion on the top track because there is no transform. So you're isolating him, and you only have to do that for a quick second. The rest of this clip, it just blends in because they're all 100%. I'll show you an easier example later on. Now for this one here, I thought this was, this is, I, I don't know if this is how they did it in the, in the Bollywood video I watched, but this is the way that I would do it. And the idea here is that you've got one clip, but it looks like this camera move happens. Boom. There's no cuts. It's one clip. And what I'm doing is I'm changing the scale and position. So at the beginning, this is the original scale and position. At the end, it's the original scale and position. In the middle, I've enlarged this 139% and changed the, the position and moved it off. It's as if you've cut to a jerky camera kind of look. And in a fast-paced music video, this kind of thing looks okay. So you'll see this here. Shoop, boo. Shoop, boo. What's important is that these first keyframes are changed from linear to hold. I'll show you what happens when they're typical linear keyframes. If they're linear keyframes, then you get this effect. What happens is the 100% at the beginning immediately starts to change to 139% in the middle. But if it's a hold keyframe, the 100% stays 100% until it hits the 139, and then it, it jumps to that. So you select those keyframes, right click, hold. Now it holds, boom. Boom. And the cool thing about this is you can copy this and you can paste this 
in a couple of places or even save this as a preset and then drop this in several places. So you could call it my left jump camera move and then you could do a right jump camera move and, and have several of these. Very easy to do. All right. Now the next one, I have these two great clips of this guy where he's he's coming down and then I cut to him coming up with a different instrument. I thought that was pretty cool. But what I wanted to do here is I wanted to accentuate the quarter note drum beat. Boom, boom. So if we play this back with the music, two things are happening. I added an extra kick drum sound on top of this and I'm jerking the frame so it's as if the kick drum is so powerful and loud that it's it's jerking the camera frame. So the kick drum stuff is just two samples. So here's the you know a typical drum sound and then I've got this on top of it. And when you add that tick to the beginning of a, of a, like an 808 kind of drum sound. It just helps people hear that kick drum, especially on little speakers on a laptop, those lower frequency sounds, you'll never hear them, but with that little tick in there, then you do hear them. So you'll notice I have a whole bunch of markers at the top. Now I'm a drummer, been drumming all my life and I have pretty good timing. I've done this before many times. I don't know why I was so inaccurate. Basically what I did is I got ready for this part here. I played and I was tapping the M key to add markers, M, M. And make sure you don't have anything selected. So you have nothing selected. And as I was playing it, oops, let me unmute that. So I did that so I could have a better understanding of, of where each effect had to happen. The problem was, I don't know why, but when I put the effects on those markers, it was way off. So I had to move those around. So let's look at the effect. I'll open this up a bit. And what you'll see, if we go to the beginning here, 108% is the scale that I have, and I've got no keyframes. So both of these clips are zoomed up at 108%. The scale doesn't change. I need that because when I move the cat when I move the frame up and down, up and down, if you don't scale it up, you'll have black at the bottom, black at the top, black at the so there are only one, two, three, four. There's only five keyframes. What you what you do is you have you see how it's moving down and then up and down and up. So the last keyframe is the original value. It's in the center. The first one is as high as I could go before I had a black line at the bottom. So if, if I take this up any higher, you see that black line at the bottom. So 108% change the, the uh, Y value as high as you can go. The next one is change the Y value as low as you can go before you get the black at the top. The next two keyframes are less. So imagine if something hits, let's say something hit the camera. It usually hits the camera and the camera will jerk large, Less, 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 and it settles down. Boop, 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 boop. And these are the kind of animation motions we're used to. Boom, boop, 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 boop. So with five keyframes, the first one is the highest it can go. The second one is the lowest it can go. The, the third one is a little less high. The, the lot, fourth one is a little less and then back to, to zero. So once I had that, I just copied that and pasted it. But look at how far off my markers were. This is where I thought I was going to be. So I ended up having to zoom in and listen to this quite a bit. So the final result looks like the camera is being jerked by this pounding kick drum. Final. 
And if I wanted to, I could turn this off because this is a transform effect. I'm not using the, the uh, motion effects. And I could change this to 180. And I could add some motion blur on there. I don't think you see it that much. Maybe take this up more. Yeah, that helps a little bit. So what's happening here is you're turning off the uh, shutter angle and changing that to something much larger. And now it has that motion blur in it. So just another effect. Okay. Uh, I think this was another one of those jerky guys. Yeah. So there's another one of those same camera moves. Okay. So here's another one of those scale effects. So again, transform. And this one I did all with one, one clip. I don't have two clips on top. And all I'm doing is I'm transforming this and then adding a mask and inverting that mask. So if you don't invert the mask, the transform effect happens inside. I want it to happen outside. So just like before, I'm at 100% scale. I'm at 117% scale. And then I'm at 100% scale. So it does that. And I also have a mask feather on there. So the final effect and because he's near a bunch of flight cases that have geometric sides on them, it doesn't look that odd. It was a little harder on the other one because there was the carpet and his feet and stuff. So I, I was uh, challenged on that one. This one, I just drew a rectangular mask. And this one is just a mirror effect, pretty simple. I've got a whole tutorial I'll link to about creating mirror escape. Uh, I call them mirror escapes, and they're way too much fun to do. And again, another one of those jump cuts. And then another one of those enlargements. So I'm enlarging on the outside. So now that you know that, let's watch it again and you'll see that. Never go slow or hard like a rhino. Never go slow or hard like a rhino. Oh, and I did forget one of the other effects there. This guy. Okay, so this is again using the same idea. It's a transform and I'm um, scale this 110%. The difference here is I'm moving the mass and I'm not inverting it. So the enlargement happens inside that mask, but the mask moves from one side to another. Okay. You'll probably have to watch this a few times uh, to, to pick up all of those, but I think there's some interesting stuff in there. Like I said, Bollywood effects are usually way over the top, but hey, why not have some fun with uh, what you're doing in Premiere Pro? Hey, if you're new to Video Reveal and you found this informative, uh, take a moment and subscribe. We're getting close to that magic number. And if you want to support us more, you can do that on our website, videoreveal.com slash shop, where you can donate once or monthly, any amount. There's lots of free stuff to download. And uh, you can also buy some cool titles and sports. Until next time, I'm Colin Smith, and it's my job to bridge the cultures together and help us create some over-the-top cool-looking effects.